Okay, welcome everyone. So actually today's agenda is a second session from a series of three we have been doing, which is called Breaking the Circle of Trauma. And today we are actually dealing with the, so there was there are three uh, in the series, we are doing three things. Last week, last Sunday, we did something called knowing, understanding what is trauma and how to build your own roadmap and do some breaking the cycle. Uh, one element in this, and this is what we are going to do today, is before to heal this life, what about the things you inherit from your parents, from the environment, which is not coming from trauma that you have experienced yourself, but somebody else's trauma that has been transferred to you and you've inherited. So this is what we are going to focus today. And then next week, and I'm not so sure we will finish next week, we will start with birth, uh, which is pregnancy and birth time, uh, uh, which is in my experience with working with thousands of people, there's a lot that happens there. And if you can heal that time, uh, we can actually release in the present moment many issues that we face. So let's get into, into topic today. We are going to talk about legacy burdens. And for those of you who are coming first time uh, for the session, we, we use this topic of the day as a way to provoke our deep subconscious thought patterns that actually gives us trailheads or breadcrumbs for our mind that then we do in a group exercise to do something about them, to heal them, to better understand, learn from them, and so that we can go on our journey of transformation. And today we are going to get a little bit better understanding of trauma at a high level. Uh, I will uh, share with you the, how I have experienced trauma in my personal journey, but also working with thousand plus people individually. And what we will do is we will build, build a little bit of inner resources before we start working on anything, any legacy trauma. Uh, and then we will go into biofield tuning using tuning forks, and then we will finish and have reflections or feedback. And so you're more than welcome to stay at the end if you want. That's what is our story. So I will do a couple of repetition from last time, so just for people to know because the subject of trauma is important. I'll share two definitions that to me are best, the best experts I know in the area of trauma. One is Gabba Mate and the other one is Bessel van der Kolk. Uh, Gabba Mate, who is actually very well known in the area of, in the work of mental health issues, especially around addiction. He actually recently came in a movie called Wisdom of Trauma. If somebody has not seen it, I highly recommend you see it. And he explained that trauma is not what happens to you, but what happens inside of you as a result of what happened to you. So it's the way by which your inner system copes with something that happens from outside. So the inner mechanics or inner system coping is what create what is trauma so when we will work on it we'll work not on the external event but on the inner coping from from whatever happened externally Bessel van der is uh, he's been is probably known as the one of the gurus in this area he wrote a he's written a book which is still after many years a bestseller uh, body keeps score it's a gem for those of you who want to deeply understand the subject of how traumas impact our life. It's a, it's a fairly easy read, but it has lots of examples. And I think it gives in huge depth how from an early childhood, especially, and he, he explained that early childhood leaves us stuck in a stage of helplessness and terror. And hence we perceive the world from those lenses, from that place of danger throughout our life till the trauma is released. Now, what I will do is I will get you into a roadmap quickly. And again, this is my personal experience. So I have gone through very early childhood sexual abuse. I have bullied, I've been, I mean, uh, 
everything that happens to people uh, has gone, I've gone through personally in my life. And uh, in my work over the last 11 years, I've of course worked a lot on myself and also seen how this pans out into the world. So I got very fascinated because of working on myself, which was very, very difficult in the beginning when I started to do the work. And so what I've understood after 11 years of my personal experience working with people is that basically I put it into three, and I know it's very simplistic, but three steps, three stages. First one is knowing. And it's really important for us to take some time to understand what is trauma. What I'm giving you is just a, not even a minuscule of what, what you probably may need to know. And again, it's to have an intellectual understanding. And, and there are basically four experts named that I would recommend. From my experience, they are, I worked with all of them. They are absolutely very good, wonderful human being. They have gone through it, so they know the subject and they work with thousands of people over 40, 30, 40 years of experience. So Gaber Mate, I spoke about him. Richard Schwartz, who is also the creator of a system which we will, which you use in our Sunday sessions, which is called IFS. Bessel van der Kroek, I told you about that. And there is another guy, his name is Peter Levine. It's, he talks about trauma being stored physically in the body uh, somat so it's all about somatic uh, work so the first thing is understand just get your understanding second thing you start working with traumas so you have to heal them you have to go through the process of but once you decide to work on traumas what starts to happen when you commit to that path your inner system starts to guide you of course in the beginning there is resistance of course, there is going to be dark night of soul. Yes, it will happen. But your inner system starts to guide you, brings you pieces, and you keep moving forward. The only thing you have to do is I commit to it. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. And coming here is actually a good question, a good step. This is part of the, part of the process. So ask questions. Have a mentor guide this this place has some element of that but have somebody with you who you trust because when you go into dark night of soul when you kind of go deep down you need someone to help you who doesn't judge you but who's there to be on your side it's like you know the best friend that doesn't tell you well you did wrong or right is holding you while you go through that so that hand that holds you when you go through difficulty is important. So a mentor, a guide, a friend, somebody you trust. And then the third thing, and, and what you do is you build resources within yourself. And the work we have been doing here is actually helping you build resources. Resources are go-to. There can be tools, there can be simple steps, but these are, they help you to build this self of inner power because once your inner power comes in then traumas do not hold anything they become actually a gift which goes to my third point is uh, have a life purpose a north star there is this is i cannot tell you how many people i've met and worked with just by having a life purpose which which we do not articulate it most of the time we kind of know it, but we don't write it. We don't put it into words. Starts to create this incredible pull to push you out, to push you forward. So while you commit, have this life purpose done not too far away from commitment, because then this helps you to go through that dark night of soul because you see the light on the other side. So. It is simplistic, but I just could not think about anything else to tell you in this moment about your part. I have done it this way, and I've seen so many people that I work with follow exactly the same path. And next time I'm going to share with you a little bit more detail about this roadmap. So let's get into 
a bit into legacy burdens because we are talking about legacy. And I want you to us to differentiate between personal burdens or personal traumas and legacy burdens because they are they have difference. Now traumas they 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 result in creating of strong beliefs, inner beliefs, emotions and energies, which often results in kind of self-destructive of often aggr aggressive inner behaviors. That's what they do, okay? But if the beliefs are formed as a result of direct life experience, then they are a personal burden. And we heal them like we did last Sunday, and we will also try next week as well. However, if the beliefs are absorbed from family, for example, or from culture, or from an environment, from a school, from a teacher, but did not come from your own personal experience, but from someone else's experience, then it becomes, it is a legacy. And, and some of them appear to be very critical. So we, so we blindside them, but they are very, very critical. I give you an example, a woman not trusting a man this could be a result of a young girl who is using mother's, grandmother's shaming voice and image and energy in a desperate attempt to prevent further injury because the grandmother was always critical to men as she was abused during a war as a young woman. Now grandmother's pain is picked by that young woman as an into our inner system and it gets converted into a protection mechanism even if the young girl never experienced any abuse but she believes in the in that because her inner world strongly holds that belief as true so if now as a 40 year old woman she's unable to have relationship is because she's holding on to that legacy burden which did not come from any experience that she had in her life. It came from the pain and the experience of her grandmother. And we can expand this to many other things. There is cultural, there's ethnic beliefs, family beliefs, which become part of kind of a belief system that we buy into. And some of those beliefs are limiting. And th those beliefs then make people feel stuck because they don't find any event that relates to that, but they strongly get stuck into that place. And I hear it so many times with my clients. Nothing has happened to me, but then they remember hearing someone in the family speak about it passionately, passionately when they were little kids mother, grandmother, grandfather, and they, they understand that actually it came from somewhere else. So some of the examples of legacy beliefs, we don't do things by half measures. It is not okay to outshine your siblings. We are independent people. We are strong in this family. Anger should not be expressed. Apology is a sign of weakness. Boys don't cry. Women should not speak their mind. Money, money doesn't grow on trees. You have, you have got to earn your existence. Things will go wrong. You're supposed to be worried for everything. I'm just giving examples of people I work with. These are some of the legacy beliefs. They were not coming from themselves. They came from somewhere else. So let's start with you. We will start by bringing you into a place where you will connect to a legacy in your life. And before we go there, actually what we'll do is try to bring you some energy and resources so that these will stay with you throughout this process and afterwards. Now, you can close your eyes. 
and focus on your breathing. Imagine your breath going in and out of your heart, breathing a little slower and deeper than usual. Breathe into your heart and allow the breath to flow in and out of your heart. Imagine you're floating 500 feet into the air. And imagine there's a white light which is coming down from the sky and flowing into your body, into your head. It fills up your head, goes into your throat, fills it up into your shoulders, into your arms and fingers, into your chest, into your belly down into your legs and through your feet the white light goes deep into Mother Earth takes all the energy and power of Mother Earth and comes back into the through the feet, into the legs fills them up into the belly and stomach fills it up into the chest fills it up into your shoulders, fill it up. Into your arms and fingers, fill that up. And into your head. And fills it up. So now you're filled with this beautiful, powerful white light. With the strength of Mother Earth. I imagine a place where you feel completely safe. A place you have been to. Or a place in your imagination. Imagine this place in as much details as possible. Is a place where you feel completely safe. And if you can't find it, imagine it. Notice where you are and what do you see. What time of day and what time of year is this? Is it warm or cold? What do you hear? What can you smell? What feeling do you have being in this place? Notice how your body reacts in this safe place. What would make this place even more safer? Make that possible. Please give a name to this place. And remind yourself to note it down afterwards. Now imagine.
imagine a secure container or a vault where you can put any distressing material. It is big and it is stable with a lock which can be only opened by you. It can be a box, a chest, a jar, a pot. Use your imagination to create this vault, which is stable with a lock. Now, can you store in this everything that you feel you cannot endure? Remind yourself that at any time during the process today, you can bring the wall to store the things that create too much psychological reaction. It is kept safe in the vault until you wish to open it and work in the therapy process. Now just settle in, see what your body is very comfortable to be soft. Feel settled. And follow your breath, allowing the breathing to be slower and deeper with a comfortable rhythm that is effortless. And as you breathe effortlessly, you can inform your system that it is working in your leadership effortlessly. Now think of something you want to work with today. This can be something which you have got from your mother, father, grandparent, teacher, environment. Something that we can call a legacy burden. Something that holds you back. Take a moment and see if you can find it. As you think of this, make an invitation now and notice where you feel it in and around your body. I'm just going to invite you to take a little longer to be there with your body and all the sensations that are there.
And as you focus on it, on the sensation in and around your body, see if that there is anything that this part wants you to know. Listen to it speak to you. It may be something you are annoyed with, or afraid of, or even hate. I just want you to be, pay some attention to it and be curious what it wants you to know about itself. you could get to know it better and it might have some surprising things to tell you. In other words, just be curious. And now ask it, what has been it like for it to carry this legacy burden? And wait for an answer. What has been it like for it to carry this legacy burden? Another question to ask is, what was the reason for it to carry this burden all this time? As you hear it say, just notice how you feel towards it. And now ask a question, where does this burden come from? Is it from someone? If so, from whom? From mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, combination of above, above, teachers or others? Where did it come from? Would you like to release the burden and heal? And even if you release the burden, the connection to the past generation and all the gifts that came from them will always be with you. You can continue to have them in your life. Do you have permission continue to heal the legacy burden. And 
to wait for an answer. And if there is a resistance, we can assure that this is a safe environment and all the gifts will be preserved. Only the burdens are released for higher good. Imagine the person from whom this burden or legacy came from just behind you. Who did this person get it from? Imagine those persons just behind this one. and sense all the past generations, known and unknown, behind them, possibly all through the horizon. See them all lined up behind, known and unknown. Imagine all the future generation, known and unknown, and place them in front of you. Now place a source of healing energy behind the generation line. The healing energy can be light, water, fire, sound, earth. Choose one and sending the healing energy using water or light or sound, or earth, to the generation line behind you, till the horizon. Now gather all your own legacy burden energy. Collect the legacy energy from the future generations. And then add it to your own. and send this legacy energy out of your body into the image of the person who you got it from. And have them add their own legacy energy to yours and pass it, all of it, to the generation behind. And pass all of it back through the generation, known and unknown, with each generation adding their own legacy energy and sending it all the way back 
to the healing source of energy where it will be transformed to its highest good. Take a moment. Collecting your energy from the future, adding it, sending it to the previous one, where it's their own, send it to their previous one, and so and so, till it goes through all the generations and transforms into healing source of energy for our highest good. Now, what are the qualities you would like to invite that you might have lost when you took on the legacy burden? What are the qualities you would like to invite into you? Would you like to send these qualities to all the generation behind you? There is abundance for all. Pass those qualities forward to the future generations, known or unknown. And now bring those qualities into every cell of your body. Check within yourself how it feels to be free from the legacy burden. And when that feels complete, just follow your breath back into present moment. And stay with that while I prepare for the tuning fork, so stay with that place in reflection. You can open your eyes if you want. If you want to write what came up, you can do that. But stay in that place. And I
prepare for the next. Okay, we are going to get into the sound healing part. So for those of you who are new, just to explain new, we are going to work on the two terminals, the north and south. So if you think about your body with like electromagnetic field. So the first thing we do in a sound healing is we open the two terminals so that your link to the mother earth, the connection to the ground is opened up and is correct and then also open up the top of your head. And then today for the session, because we are working on legacy, now your legacy burdens come from the, from the generation. So 10 inch around you in the physical body from a tuning fork, there is all the, let's call it every stress that you picked up from your previous generation actually stored from a biofield point of view, it's about 10 inches on the two sides of the body. So I will work on that and I will guide you, I will speak. You just have to stay in the field and listen to me. Now there's a specific breathing that happens in the, in the tuning fork session. So the breathing is like this. You take a breath in from your nose. So imagine the breath is also flowing into your body in filling up your belly and then you breathe out from your mouth as if you're breathing into your leg so the idea is to create opening of this channel you just breathe into your belly and then breathe out okay so you will hear me breathe you i'm going to tell you breathe and you breathe with me okay and then i'm going to ask you if you bring certain memory certain time just follow and uh, just be with me so just relax you can lie down you can stay in a comfortable position if the noise is too high and also uh, what i said in the beginning of disclaimer just mute yourself okay uh, and correct your voice okay and i'm going to begin so just relax and be in a comfortable position. So we start by opening the channel below the feet first. It's called the Earth Star. And it is the link to the Mother Earth, but it's also a link to the strength. So I'm pointing my tuning fork towards your feet and the sound is going through the backbone up to the top of the head, opening that channel. I immediately feel resistance in the chest. Not a lot. Okay, take a breath. So there's a lot of resistance, so the movement is not fluid. So I'm going to use another tuning fork, you may not hear it, to open the resistance. 
you may hear part of it sometimes it's because it's a silent thing of course so take a breath and focus wherever you feel something appears to be blocking for you So the sound changed, things open up, and feel it going up through. We take a breath. So I've grounded you. Now I go to the top of the head and we'll do the same the top of the head, open up the channel from the head down going toward the feet. Take a breath. Take a breath. So I've opened the two channels. Now what I'm going to do is to work on the on the part of your mother's side and the father's side and i will start with the roots chakra which is the perineum which is where your basically your hips are so this area and i will start on the left side which is the mother's side okay so this is a legacy that has been brought in from the mother and see what we find and heal it okay so there's a lot coming up everything going into the chest so there's a lot of sadness that is just coming up so if you if you have that feeling that's okay just pay attention to wherever it comes from and send blessing to your mother just take her name and send her love We've been guided to say, if the mother did not feel safe to bring you in, just send her love still. Because she did not feel safe growing up part in my life. So 
I'm going to change to the other tuning fork to bring some while you think about whatever came up and continue to send love to your mother. And whatever she brought in, she did not know that she was carrying her own burdens. And it feels heavy in the chest. It's okay. I'm going to work there next. Take a breath. And there's something else you can do is take a breath in and say, ah, release. And it went. One more. <sighs> Whatever came up, I'm going to release it out. is asking me to go to the heart. So I'm again on the left side of your heart still, mother. Just to check if anything else is coming up, release. So this is where sadness or grief could be from the mother. It was her sadness, her grief. Again, take her name in your mind and just send blessing to her, wherever she is. You're holding her in love, unconditional love. Understanding that she had to go through her grief and sadness. Now I'm going on the right side of the heart, which is father's side. I'm going into the legacy of the father, what he brought in.
Let's take his name, send blessing to him. There's heaviness there, so I'm just going to release that, whatever is coming up for you. I'm going to release it out, whatever I collected. Okay, so there's a release, resistance to release. Just going to open up any resistance that could be there. Take a breath. Whatever work has been done, we seal it in so it continues to work over the next 48 hours. So body adapts. And we cook on it with 528 hertz. <laughs> <laughs> 